So we have Anna, Sophia, and Joel, and they're going to present the first uh, group presentation. We're going to have three group presentations, and the event will go until 8 p.m., and uh, we'll have short uh, opportunities for questions in between each presentation. So take it away, you guys. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Joel DeMello. I'm Sophia Badney. And I'm Anna Price. And we're presenting today on behalf of the Center for Arabic Culture in Somerville. So the mission of the Center of, Ab of Arabic Culture is to promote Arabic culture and the Arabic American experience through education and through the arts. The CAC aims to be New England's premier resource for secular, all-inclusive Arabic culture. So the CAC was founded in 2006 with offices at the, at the Somerville Armory, and it um, serves around 500 people yearly. The CAC's director is Gidi Gitani, and its program coordinator is Amla Raiki, and the board has 12 members. So um, the CAC also operates at Mount Ida um, College in Newton, Massachusetts, um, and then also offers tabla oud and dance classes, film screening, book signings, and concerts. The population served at the um, Center for Arabic Culture ranges from about five to late 60s. Its patrons generally come from the suburbs of Boston, and it has 1,100 patrons on the constant contact email list since the fall of 2013, and it offers Arabic uh, classes for about 100 students. So the, most pro it's, the CAC is the most prominent secular Arabic organization in the greater Boston area. Um, it's younger than many of its peers around the country, and it's also a member of the National Le Network of Arab American Communities. So some of the challenges the CC faces is, a th is it's thriving in the current economic climate, um, expanding programming in the short and long term, and making more formal connections with local businesses. So three of our main goals um, have been to, um, to ameliorate the membership, marketing, and inter internship plan at the center. And so uh, what you see here is kind of our little menu of what we're going to be talking about, the six different objectives that we worked with this semester. And so the first we'll talk about is surveying patrons uh, and then establishing an internship program, uh, the newsletter we put together, uh, a membership program, uh, marketing, and the open house that we had a couple weeks ago. And so the surveys that we sent out, uh, we sent them out initially at the end of last semester to uh, families at the Arabic Sunday School, which is what the CAC does at Mount Ida uh, in Newton. And we got a handful of paper responses from them. And then at the beginning of the semester, we sent them out electronically to all 1,000 plus of the CAC's email contacts. And uh, basically, we're asking questions about what they knew and didn't know about the CAC, what they'd like to see uh, programming-wise, and what we could do to get them more involved at the center. And we had about 30 responses uh, in all. So we'll go through some of the questions, uh, some of the more interesting things. Um, a lot of the families at the school don't tend to get involved at the center uh, besides the Sunday school. And so we were curious to know if they just weren't getting involved, if they didn't know what was going on. And so we found out that generally they do know what kind of events are being held. Um, and what, so we followed that up by asking what would they attend if, if the CAC was hosting these events, and the answers that we got were pretty helpful. Uh, as you can see, concerts, public speakers, and movie nights were a pretty popular response. And a lot of people were really looking for family-oriented programming, stuff that the whole family could go to uh, together. Um, and this was a little tough to, to see. Uh, most people, you know, what kept them from getting involved was just time, you know, being really busy. So that's something that the CAC kind of has, we have to kind of work on. Um, this was a little more encouraging. Um, about half of the responses that we got were from people who were interested in a membership program. Um, so that was a big boost uh, going forward. And this was tough. So a lot of the people who pay tuition at the Mount Ida College uh, classes on Sundays don't give to the annual appeal to the CAC. So that's something that going forward that the CAC is going to focus on pushing. And we finished off by asking how interested each family was in Arabic culture. And not surprisingly, most, most people were very interested. Um, and so based on this, we kind of came to some recommendations that we thought would be, help, be helpful to the CAC. Um, and so we came up with a stronger emphasis on the annual appeal. 
uh, more flexible programming, trying to work with uh, patrons to see when they could come to, to the center, when they could show up to events, and what could you know, get them to make time for things. Um, and more family-friendly events, um, as well as a bigger push for the membership program going forward over the next couple months and years. So the main objective of this AC was to establish a permanent internship plan. And so um, basically my role was to create an, a contact list of 62 faculty and staff members from 14 local colleges and universities. And I added this AC into five university internship databases. Um, so for the internship model, I created um, a sustainable unpaid internship program can distribute, okay, the flyers. <laughs> and uh, the job descriptions um, incorporated the same tasks that we um, CC interns are doing and continuing. And um, this, um, the internship plan that we are distributing is the same um, internship flyer that, we, that I sent out to the 62 um, faculty and staff of the 14 colleges. And it will be um, documented for future announcements via email and hard copy. So basically, in order to network to these universities, I did a lot of research. And um, I compiled a list of um, the universities. And I got an email contact with, um, with the Arabic um, language and culture professors from these universities. And I sent out individual emails to them. And so since then, uh, we have had four potential interns. Uh, we, interview, we interviewed all of the interns, but two of them were hired. Um, and as we see, Rachel um, from the left is um, attending Boston University. And from the right, we have Taylor, who's um, at Wheeling College currently. And we have also identified a prospective fall intern from Tufts University. And so uh, the next thing we'll talk about is the newsletter that we sent out about a month ago. Um, so it was the first like, major newsletter that the CEC had sent out. Um, and it was sent, like I said, uh, towards the end of April, about a month ago, uh, via the constant, consta constant contact program that CAC, CAC uses to, uh, to keep track of all, all of its email, emails. Uh, and so it featured contributions from pretty much everybody involved at the CAC, the director, Geed, uh, Alma, the program director, uh, Rhonda, the head of the school, and countless people involved at the center. Um, and it was focused on the open house that we held uh, a couple weeks ago, um, just kind of promoting the different performers and things that would be, be happening there. Um, and this one was sent to everyone on the email list, but uh, in the future it'll be like a membership perk. So anybody who's a member of the, at the center will receive the email. And about 300 people opened it uh, when we sent it out. And we got a, about 100 people who clicked through and were reading, reading links and stuff. And we got a lot of compliments at the open house, which was good. So we think that a lot of people who ended up clicking through those links uh, ended up showing up to the open house. So it was a very successful. Uh, it was successful. Um, so the next thing is the membership program that we worked on all semester. And um, so basically, we were looking for a new way for CAC to engage with the community, some an another way for people to have a sustained relationship with the center. And so we kind of we looked at places around the country and locally that have membership programs. And part of that was these three, uh, these three centers right here, uh, the Arab Cultural, Cultural and Community Center from California, the Greater Boston Chinese Cultural Association, and the National Network for Arab American Communities in Dearborn, Michigan, which CEC is actually a member of themselves. And so this is what we're looking to do with the membership program. Um, basically, like I said, increase community exposure, kind of get more people involved on a regular basis with the center. Um, as well as forging um, more, you know, long, long, long-term relationships with businesses, um, as well as kind of a promotional thing uh, over over the years. And in the long term, as it grows, hopefully, it can become a little bit of a, a source of profit for the uh, for the center. And uh, this is the CAC's website uh, right now. If you go check it out, you can attend that really great uh, movie screening that's going to be happening soon. And uh, on the right there, you can see the Become a Member button that just got put up. And if you click that, you can join online. Um, and it'll be, it's live right now. So, and this is the different levels that we have. Um, so the indi individual student and family memberships are basically the same perks uh, for, for those three groups. And then we have some larger, uh, larger levels, a supporter, sustainer, benefactor, and ambassador, and a membership referral program. So if you're a member, and you, uh, you refer a friend, then you get some free tickets to go to a CAC event. 
and these are the perks. So it's mostly discounts and that newsletter that we mentioned and some free uh, branded merchandise that you'll see later when we talk about marketing. Um, and it was it was pretty successful launch. It's like I said, it's a long term project, but um, we did have two two large donations uh, through membership at the at the open house, um, which was which was exciting. And so going forward, CAC is going to continue pushing it, uh, try to you know have it grow slowly but steadily uh, as as the years go. And we uh, it's kind of a parting gift for CAC. We purchased the Donor Perfect program with our grant, which is basically a way to digitally track uh, all your members and kind of keep track of, of who's joining and everything. Um, yeah, so, so that's what they'll be using. And now I'm gonna tell you about our marketing efforts. So we had some promotional items made for the membership and these membership perks included bumper stickers, decals for those of us who do not like bumper stickers, Mugs, t-shirts, tote bags, and pens, all branded with the CAC logo. And you can see some of it there. Um, and we also had printed materials. We had posters printed for our open house, as well as inserts for the brochures and uh, the programs. And we have, where did we pass those out? We will pass those out at the end. Um, and you can see them also up there on the screen. And we also had a, like online and social media uh, marketing efforts. And so we had a Google AdWords um, effort where we created an account through CSEF for uh, the CAC. And we had paid advertising in for Google AdWords. And what that is, if you don't know, is um, whenever somebody types in a certain word or term like Arabic culture or cultural center, um, the advertising for the open house um, would show up in the ad space in Google. Um, and this generated, over five days, it generated 14,532 impressions, and 43 people clicked on the actual ad and were sent to the CAC website. And for social media, we all know that that's a big thing these days. Um, so since January, we've had over 100 new likes on the Facebook page, um, and they have a little over 1,200 likes. And there have been 70 new post likes since the open house, um, which I believe is the highest from the data analysis. And we've had 27 new post likes uh, just on the, 20, uh, the 27th of February when we announced the open house. Um, and there were over 185 new followers on their Twitter page since last September when we launched the program. And you can see, um, if you go onto Facebook, if you have a Facebook account, you can type in Center for Arabic Culture into your search, and you can actually like the CAC Facebook page. <laughs> and uh, we have some recommendations from the insights um, for the social media. And uh, some of the key things to focus on is posting photos, and if it's for an event by the next day, um, it's really key. And you can, uh, for the most part, avoid uh, constant status updates and links. Those don't attract as many um, uh, interactions. And uh, you want to focus on posting every day um, to increase the buzz about the CAC. And keeping posts short and concise and direct um, is important. And also keeping track of the insights and looking at how those change because um, you know, trends change, your audience may change. Um, and also, on the Twitter page, uh, just switching the, currently, the, when you type in the name, it's listed as CAC, um, and in the um, description, it's listed as Center for Arabic Culture. If those two things would be just be switched, it would be a lot easier to find your page. And um, these are some of the insights from the Facebook page. Um, we're currently looking at um, the types of posts that are put up between photos, status, and links. And so the yellow is how, how many people are reached um, by the, each kind of post. And the blue is how many post clicks there were for that type of post. And the pink is how many likes, comments, and shares. And you can see by the lines that photos are incredibly more popular. And these are external references. So these are other ways that people find the Facebook page outside of Facebook. And um, 
We have Google.com, other Google uh, sites, and Meetup, which is an uh, um, subsidiary, subsidiary of Google. And so it's important um, also with the Google AdWords, and you can see that it generates a lot of external references. And this is looking at who, you, who your demographics are, who's engaged with the Facebook page. 75% um, are women, smaller amounts for men, um, but the general age bracket is between 25 and 44, so a lot of parents. And additionally, um, because of our insights with photos, we thought that promotional videos might be very engaging for people, and so we have three videos. There's one for the Aoud class, um, and this is an Arabic North African lute. And um, we also have belly dancing class video, and then we're gonna have a best of combination of those two videos. And now we're going to watch a clip. So these are some of the skills you can learn in the belly dancing class. She's good. <laughs> Another one of our main objectives was organizing a day-long open house event on May 10th. So the open house um, hosted concerts, dance, and henna. And we also um, had Middle Eastern food, calligraphy, an art gallery, and cotton candy, of course. And so, Anna gave the henna um, tattoos to guests all day. Uh, Joel and I, we were um, manning the membership table and we also distributed snacks and we all helped set up the event. During the open house event, we had about more than 300 attendees and uh, we had an estimated $2,000 profit in ticket sales and 85% of all the ticket sales were family member um, tickets sold. We had um, two memberships sold that day 13 donations, and more than 50 people um, signed up for the emailing list. So we just have some people we'd like to thank before we finish up. Uh, of course, Alma and Gide from the center. Alma's right here, and she's the best. Uh, Kathleen, who's our faculty mentor. Uh, Rajni, Mike, and Megan, of course, from Honors, who have been so great for the last two semesters. Anna and Megan for the photos that you saw in the PowerPoint. Uh, and everyone at the Center for Arabic Culture, or all the, all the participating sponsors for the, for the open house, so you'll see them in the program. Um, and a special thanks to Deb Debsky, um, <laughs> uh, and as well the ARC organization in the UMass President's Office for the funding that made this all possible. And uh, thank you all for listening, and would gladly take any questions. <laughs> So we're going to pass a few uh, pieces of information around that the team made so that you can take a look at them. There's a few copies of the flyers of the internship program that Sophia made. So you guys should feel free to pass those around so people can see uh, what that job description looks like. And then uh, I'm going to have Anna, do you want to start to pass around these two materials? There's a, the poster from the open house and also the program uh, from the open house. So while we're passing those items around so you guys can take a look, uh, we would be more than happy to have the team answer any questions. So are there questions for this team? Was the open house at the Armory in Somerville? It yeah. was. Yep. And did you persuade people from the suburbs who take classes at Mount Ida to come to the open house in Somerville? Yeah, it was, it was a huge turnout. Um, I, I, I think there were some families from the school. There were a lot of kids there. I mean, yeah. I know there are people that are on the school. Um, most of the families who attended from the school, uh, their kids were uh, participating in the open house. They were a part of the choir, because we established a choir for the center. And their kids were singing there. So they came and they, bring fr they brought friends. So that was... Uh, but 
there were like uh, about five other families who were only from the school. They came with their kids to, to attend to. So from the school there was a good, uh, re relatively good turnout. And the children in the choir weren't the only ones singing. If you look in this photo, you may recognize someone else who sang at the open house. And led the choir, the children's choir, and put them together in like a month and a half. I think I was wearing many hats that day, so. <laughs> <laughs> we may have her perform later. Sam, did you have a question? Yeah. Well, so I, I was just going to ask um, what the description of the internship job entailed, but it has it on here. Um, and I was wondering if there was um, class credit for doing the internship. Um, so basically, we do offer uh, course credit for the interns. Um, it's an unpaid internship position, but um, also letters of recommendations are um, also being distributed by Alma and um, Gid. Yeah. Uh, if you guys had one or two overarching goals after you performed the survey, what would they be? And then my second question is, um, before you started, what was the membership engagement with the center and how is it now? So I'll, I'll answer the membership part of that and then I think as a group we can handle the first part. But um, basically the membership, uh, the membership program didn't exist. So we basically, yeah, from the start of the semester on basically just uh, built it from scratch um, with, with the help of some great interviews with the organizations that we, uh, that we mentioned. Um, so it, it was pretty much, it was a goal for, for CAC, so it didn't come out of nowhere, but it, it, it didn't have any, like, any real foundation yet. Yeah. And as far as like what we, like, what our plan was once we saw the survey results, I mean, it was tough. I mean, definitely we wanted to focus on on like the families at the school. I think that was like kind of the big thing that we got out of the surveys. Yeah, one of the major things that we wanted was essentially to bridge the gap between the Sunday school and the center in Somerville. Um, so, but that, you know, I guess that's shifted slightly, but you know, we're still focusing, you know, we got a lot of families from the school to come to the open house, so that's good. I think even having the choir there to sing, you know, just helped, yeah. You guys might have uh, mentioned this in your presentation, so I'm sorry if I'm asking you to duplicate information, but do you know much about the people who responded to your survey in terms of are there families, do they live locally? Right, so we know that they're local for the most part. Um, we know that the paper surveys were from parents at the Sunday school. And we know that they, we got a small number of student surveys, because there was a special section for parents and a special section for students. So we could, you know, obviously di differentiate those based on who answered those questions, who didn't. Um, but as far as demographics go, we, we basically just know local and then, you know, age group, do they have kids, that sort of thing. So, and it was definitely helpful. Um, before I uh, give the mic to Mitch, I'm actually going to introduce the person who asked the last question and the person who asked the next question, because you've learned who Alma is. So, uh, Victoria uh, Glazmiski is here joining us from the Peabody Essex Museum, and she's an alum of the Honors College and has also uh, been providing us advice uh, during this uh, organization and implementation of the program. And now I'm going to turn the mic over to Mitch, who's here from another of our sites, Company One. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, I was just curious what prompted the choice to make the newsletter part of the, like, the membership perk program because statistically speaking, you guys had a much higher rate of engagement with the newsletter than you did with either the survey or with the Google AdWords. And I was curious why the choice to kind of exclusivity with that. Definitely, I, that's a really good question. I think, I think as of right now, I mean, until the membership has you know, gain some traction and, and there's a good amount of members. I think it'll stay probably for the entire, you know, community just to kind of like, again, like I said, get, get it so the membership can get its feet under it and just to continue growing the audience. But I think part of it was researching um, a lot, like a lot of similar cultural organizations that, and this was kind of surprising for us, but they do a, you know, their, their newsletters were primarily like membership things. Um, and we, we looked into doing it uh, like a print newsletter, which is generally how, or 
some of the organizations do it that way, which it's nicer, but it's a lot of money, and it's, it's kind of tough for CAC to do at this point. So that's, yeah, that's kind of something that's in flux, I'd say, at this point. All right, let's give another round of applause for this awesome team.